Over the course of our planet's history, time tells fascinating stories of honor, woe, decision, and the occasional fight to the death. But there are few stories like that of the Hamlet. Due to the Hamlet's non-seasonal behavior and unpredictable nature, the study of the Hamlet is limited to those with high patience and a very large coffee maker. But finally, after years of research and filming, and many cups of coffee, BBC brings to the comfort of your home the story of the Hamlet in its natural habitat. Although commonly misconceived to be quite barren, the climate is almost identical to the Canadian province of Manitoba. The southern half of Denmark has moderate summers and cold winters, making it the warmest climes of Denmark, and it is here that we find the hamlet. It's spring, and the hamlet is looking for a bite to eat. But on the way to its drinking hole, it stumbles upon a relative. The Hamlet has found the corpse of a relative creature, instantly recognizing it to be that of his father. The beautiful creature has been killed and half eaten, and the Hamlet is at a considerable loss. But the Hamlet is in danger. It appears as though there has been a predator in the area. A Claudius has been patrolling the drinking hole, and the Hamlet, sensing the danger, scans its surroundings. Instinctively, it retreats back to its home. Once it reaches its abode, it's greeted by a potential mate. The Ophelia has been waiting and, unlike most species, the female attempts to attract the male Hamlet. But the Hamlet does not react to the Ophelia's attraction mechanism. He seems to be shocked by his parent's death. The Hamlet seems so upset that he begins to create loud noises. Continues this inexplicable behavior for a few more seconds and is off. Wow. The Hamlet is fatigued from the past day. He has not eaten for the last three months and needs to find a meal if he is to survive the coming winter. The food supply has been sparse and the temperature is dropping daily. This mixture of bad news brings the Hamlet to a desperate state. The Hamlet decides to try the waterhole again, as the water provides fiber, which is otherwise hard to find in the Hamlet's meager diet. But on the way, he spots another creature. Ducking for the cover of camouflage, the Hamlet strains his eyes to see if it is the Claudius. But it is not. It is only a Polonius enjoying the weather. But the Hamlet is hungry and desperate. This may be his only chance for food, and he is not willing to give it up. And the kill is made. 
his confidence restored, the Hamlet now drags the body back home to impress the potential mate. Once home, he deposits the body, making full sure that the Ophelia sees his prize. The Ophelia is overcome with grief, for the corpse is indeed her father. With no better way to grieve, she proceeds to bite off her own leg. The Ophelia has bled to death. Still lacking the fiber he needs for a balanced diet, the Hamlet makes the trek back to the waterhole, but the Hamlet is still cautious for the signs of the impending Claudius. Despite the caution, the Claudius sneaks up upon the preoccupied Hamlet, but the Hamlet hears him. The Hamlet takes on a defensive position, and just as he does so, the Claudius charges. Hamlet, after successfully killing the impending Claudius, surveys the area. He is confused and shocked. Overcome with grief, the Hamlet bites his leg off. The Hamlet 